Mosquitoes are vectors of pathogens, organisms that cause disease. But what does that mean for people? And how do we detect those pathogens? To understand all of this, we first have to understand the mosquito. And fortunately for us, the University of Florida Entomology and Nematology Department has a mosquito colony. We're now going to look at all of the different life stages of the mosquito. They, they have them all here, which is kind of cool. So these are mosquito eggs in here. These are all 80s Egypti eggs. So each one of these egg sheets has about 250 eggs on them. You know, they're not as small as I thought. You can see them. Oh yeah. They'll lay their eggs somewhere that is expected to flood with water. When it rains, those eggs get submerged and then they will hatch. If I want to hatch these, I'd just drop them in a container full of water and within 24 hours they would hatch. They're very easy mosquitoes to rear. The larvae go through what are called instars and they're essentially just stages. So the larvae will actually molt multiple times while still in the larval stage. What do you call this room, the mosquito? This is the stage. mosquito room. How many mosquitoes would you say are in this room right now? Like 2,000 per cage? <laughs> A lot of mosquitoes in here, that's cool. Okay, so this is the pupae. Yes. Whoa, they look so different. They'll emerge out of this pupil casing and they'll come right out directly into this cage. And so this cage we can pull from if we wanna do an experiment, we can blood feed them, whatever we need to do. The males are gonna emerge first because they're gonna come out and essentially get ready. They're waiting for the female to come out. Once the females come off, the males and females mate. And a few days later, the female needs a blood meal to complete the, she needs that to lay her eggs. So she'll take that blood meal. After that, she'll be able to lay her eggs and then we can start the cycle all over again. So this is a lab colony. And if we did wanna have infected mosquitoes, we would have to feed these mosquitoes an infected blood meal. However, these mosquitoes themselves are not infected because they have not taken an infectious blood meal. And with these in particular, because mm -hmm. you just hatched them from yes. the egg, you know they don't have a disease. Yes, they've never been exposed to pathogens. So these guys that we will let feed on you do not <laughs> have any pathogens. That's good. You see right where I'm breathing, where oh, all these mosquitoes yeah, are? Like have a beard. Oh my goodness. Can you see it? Looking at, you see it? It looks like little dots poking out through the mesh. Now the reason understanding mosquito biology here is important is because it relates to disease. As it turns out, Florida has an ingenious way to look for diseases. Sentinel chickens. We are on the way to see one of the weirdest things I've ever heard of. We're going to see the sentinel chickens. Using biology to our advantage. The sentinel chicken program helps us know when there are diseases in the area even before anybody gets them. I mean, they're kind of guard dogs, aren't they? To prevent danger intruder. from yeah. coming in. Jo I'm excited to show you, Jonas. Yeah, no, you gotta yelling, see this. Oh, there we go. So the Those are the chickens. Nice. Yeah. And so we took a look at the chickens and the facility. Here's a basic overview of how it works. If a mosquito bites a human or animal with a mosquito-borne disease, that mosquito can now be the vector for the disease and can possibly transfer it to another individual if it takes a second blood meal. So these chickens are a bit akin to a canary in a coal mine because if a mosquito bites them while infected, the pathogen will be transferred to the chicken and we can detect it because the chickens start to create antibodies for the disease. So each chicken is sampled every other week. And the great thing is the chickens don't get sick from the disease, and we're able to detect the presence of it in the area. In many ways, much better than the canaries. We're mainly concerned about West Nile virus and triple E, Eastern equine encephalitis. And it might be worth noting that many of the mosquito-borne diseases can't be detected in this way such as malaria, dengue, chikungunya, and Zika. For those diseases, we rely on a few other detection methods and basic vigilance to remove places for them to lay their eggs. In fact, one of the worst mosquitoes in our area is the 80s mosquitoes, both the Asian tiger mosquito and yellow fever mosquito. They're introduced mosquitoes that specialize in biting humans, and that means they're found very close to where we live. So we all have a personal responsibility to get rid of water bodies around our homes. Make sure to watch the other videos in this series to learn about mosquitoes and what you and mosquito control can do to improve human health.